That is 28-year-old Brian Koberger walking out of a Moreau County, Pennsylvania courtroom after he waived his right to an extradition hearing. He was in court about 15 minutes, long enough to have the process explained to him by a judge to sign some paperwork and then walk out, as you see there. He also mouthed something, apparently, to his family as he walked past them in the courtroom. Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho students on November 13th. Waiving his right to an extradition hearing today means Koberger will be back in Idaho sooner rather than later to face those first degree murder charges. We did learn today from the Pennsylvania State Police. They knew about Koberger being in their area a couple of days before they served the warrant to arrest him. They said maybe 10 people were made aware of the situation and they held that information very close so as to not tip Koberger off. There were three warrants issued, one for the suspect, one for the white Hyundai Elantra, and one for his parents' home where Koberger has been since before Christmas. And given the nature of those warrants wanted for the murder of four people, they served that warrant at his parents' home at night for the safety of law enforcement, the suspect, and of course his parents. And in doing so, they broke multiple doors and windows to get into that house in the early morning hours of last Friday. Now, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of other information provided about the arrest of Koberger by the state police or even the district attorney's office in Monroe County because of the sealed arrest documents. The DA's first assistant called Idaho's law quirky. The one about not releasing the probable cause affidavit until after the suspect appears in an Idaho court. And apparently those documents haven't been made available to Koberger either. But having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. Um, so that's a, a significant development. Interesting. The state police, when asked about the process to move Koberger back to Idaho, Major Christopher Paris said it's not likely Koberger will be on a plane by tonight, so it could be a couple of more days or so. But Abby Davis has been following today's developments and kind of looking into this process the past couple of days. So here we are. He's waived his extradition rights. Not likely going to be on a plane tonight, but what happens next? Not likely, and that was something we did think would happen. Was True. He could have been back tonight, just in a few hours after his extradition hearing. But under Idaho law, he actually has 10 days to get back to Idaho. So a little bit of a rough timeline there, at which he'll make his initial appearance in court. And after that initial appearance, then he will face a judge. He will be read his charges against him. Once again, the, that's the four counts of mm -hmm. first-degree murder and the one count of burglary. And then at some point, the judge will unseal the problem cause affidavit, which we have been waiting for. It was interesting to learn that today that Koberger hasn't even had access to those documents yet, but that's where we're going to learn a lot of information about how he's connected to this crime, maybe possibly some motive, and maybe, we hope, some way that uh, they were able to figure out that this is their guy. Yeah, and before then, we didn't know any of that information. The facts of the case had been sealed, and that was something they alluded to today in the press conference, was that that may be one of the reasons Koberger ex uh, waived the extradition hearing today was to get back to Idaho and to hear those charges and what is specifically in that probable cause affidavit. Once again, could be a possible motive or just, once again, those, those main facts about what led police to Koberger. One of the other things we learned today, we had confirmation that he will be using a public defender in Laytaw County. I believe somebody, a public defender from Kootenai County, still waiting on confirmation from that. But the public defender that he had in Monroe County fully expects him to plead not guilty. Of course, that could change, but that's what we're expecting, correct? Correct. So once he is back in Idaho and he has that initial court appearance, he has the right to a preliminary hearing, which he could also waive. So there are some options for Kerber, for, for Koberger to take here. Um, if he does waive that, then it would go right to a trial, in which case would obviously, or that wouldn't push the timeline back, but it just really depends. So lots of options there. Um, yeah. And then Jason Labar, who was representing Koberger in the um, extradition hearing, mm -hmm said that he, Koberger believes that he will be exonerated True. Um, and will likely plead not guilty, so in which case would go to a trial. Okay, so now we're kind of in that waiting phase of not knowing. We will not get any idea of when he's on his way to Idaho, by the way, because they said that's for security reasons. They do not want that information out there, yes. as you can imagine. So we're just kind of going to wait and see, but we do know that uh, we were told by Captain 
Anthony Dollinger of the Moscow PD this last weekend that once Koberger gets back to Idaho and is set foot in Idaho, he should be back in a Lataw County courtroom within 24 hours. Yes, so it should happen pretty immediately and we'll, we'll get things rolling and hopefully we'll know what led police to Koberger once again, get some more details very soon. And we do have a crew on their way to Moscow right now. So again, with anywhere from 24 to even the next 72 hours, we'll have a better idea of what's happening up in Lataw. Abby, thank you very much. I really appreciate breaking that down with us.